Hi viewers, welcome to another video on microbiology video series Antigens and Antibodies. What is an antigen? It is defined as any substance which is introduced into the body except GI root will stimulate the production of antibodies. So any substance which is introduced into our body other than the GI root will start inducing our body to produce antibodies. The characteristics of antigen it is density there are two characteristics one is induction of immune response and specific reaction with the antibodies. So when an antigen is introduced into our body the first thing it does is it induces our immune response to produce antibodies and the specific reaction with the antibody is caused. So these are all the true characteristic of antigenicity. So any antigen should trigger our immune response and it will make our immune to produce antibodies. The next is classification of antigen. Depending on the antigen function, this antigen is classified as complete antigen, partial antigen. So complete antigen is the one antigen which makes our body to produce antibody and it will uh, stimulate the immune response also. We say it is complete antigen. The partial antigen is a antigen which will not make our body produce antibodies but it will show some immune response that is mild immune response but it will not induce any antibody formation we say it as partial antigen it is otherwise called as haptens so epitope and parotope are the two places where the attraction happens in antigen and antibody so the site where the anti antigen has attraction towards the antibody we call it as epitope and this paratope is a place in the antibody which attracts the antigen attachment for example this is antibody the red one is antigen then the paratope is a site of attraction of antigen and the epitope is a site of attraction in the antigen so depending on the ability to produce antibody formation, this um, antigen is classified as T cell dependent antigen, T cell independent antigen. T cell dependent antigen has a complex structure whereas T cell independent antigen has a simple structure. So the classification of antigen is of two under two types that is depending on the function, depending on the ability to produce antibody. Complete antigen and partial antigen and T cell dependent antigen and T cell independent antigen. The next is properties of antigen. How an antigen will be? It is chemical nature. First, according to the chemical nature of the antigen, the antibody production happens. Protein and polysaccharides are the common chemical nature present in the antigen. The next is size. Size of the antigen depends uh, makes the antibody production effective. So if the larger the molecule, higher the antibody production will be. And if the size of the antigen is small, then the production of antibody will be less. Next is foreignness. How different the antigen is to our body? It depends upon that the immune response is stimulated. Only foreign antigens will induce immune response. If your body is already exposed to that antigen, it will not produce antibody response that effectively. If it is a new substance, immediately our body start producing antibodies. Susceptibility, how much we are exposed to the antigen depends upon that our immune response will be. And specificity, specificity is again divided into antigenic specificity. So it depends upon the antigen itself to produce antibodies. The next is species specificity. So it depends upon what kind of species the antigen is goes into. For example, the horse has a um, highest antibody production comparing to the humans. So it depends upon the species and ISO specificity. Sometimes the antigen will look same with the other antigen which may trigger the antibody production. The next is auto specificity, our own body and, uh, and its reaction towards antigen. Organ specificity, each organ will act react differently when an antigen is exposed. The next one is heterogenic specificity. So these are all the different types of specificity which comes under the properties of antigen. 
so if they ask properties of antigen you should write chemical nature the size of the antigen foreignness susceptibility and specificity of the antigens and the next is antibodies so what is an antibody it's a y shaped protein produced by b cells of the our immune response to exposure to antigens so the antibodies are y shaped which are produced by b cells in our immune system when exposed to antigens these are otherwise called as immunoglobulins our body our blood serum has 20 to 25% of gamma globulins which is circulating in our body there are different types of immunoglobulins that are mostly five has been recognized so far okay igg iga igm igd and ige mostly they may ask difference between these igg uh, immunoglobulins the structure of immunoglobulin or antibody if you see it consists of two pairs of polypeptide chain one is light chain the other one is heavy chain so here you can see in the antibody structure there are two main stem which is called heavy chain and there are two smaller one which is called light chain okay so it has two pair of polypeptide chain which is one is heavy chain and the other two is light chain that is l and h l is attached to h by disulfate bond so this l and h are connected to each other by a disulfide bond the four chains bound together to form antibody monomer so all these four chains together we call it as antibody so each chain has a variable that is v and at uh, one end and c at the another end so each variable each chain has variable v at one end and constant c at the another end so this is the structure of antibody or immunoglobulins it is two pairs of polypeptide chain two light chain and two heavy chain l and h are binded together by disulfide bond and this all four chains forms together as an antibody monomer this antibody monomer has a variable region and a constant region the next is immunoglobulins we will have a very quick information on each type of immunoglobulin we have seen all the immunoglobulins like g igg this is the structure of igg and major serum immunoglobulin that is it, igg is the major immunoglobulin present in our body of 80% molecular weight is 7s it exists in polymerized form distributed equally in intracellular and extracellular compartments so igg is present both in intracellular as well as extracellular half life is 25 days it is raised in case of chronic diseases like kala azar malaria and myeloma normal serum concentration of igg is 8 to 16 mg per ml it is an only maternal immunoglobulin which is transported from across the placenta so the mother if has if she has immunity towards anything the fetus will also receive all those immune immunoglobulins so it is the only immunoglobulin which transfers from mother to baby so igg it is most majority of the immunoglobulin this is the highest number so 80% of immunoglobulin is igg okay and it is distributed intravascular and extravascular it raises in case of chronic diseases and it's a maternal immunoglobulin the next is iga it's a second most abundant class so after igg iga is present more in our body that is of around 10 to 13% of serum immunoglobulin so 80% igg and 10 to 13% iga normal serum level is 0.6 to 4.2 mg per ml and the half life is 6 to 8 days it is found in colostrum saliva and tears it occurs in two forms that is serum iga and secretory iga so it is of two types and it is present in the mucosal or glandular so it is the mucosal lining is made of iga plasma cells situated near the mucosal or glandular 
so it is that mucosal membrane has iga immunoglobulin it provides local immunity against respiratory infections so it it covers the respiratory tract as well as gi tract so it gives a local immunity clear so iga is the second most abundant and it is um, present of 10 to 13 percent it is present in two forms that is serum iga and secretory iga and it is found in saliva tears and colostrum wherever there is a mucosal lining then this iga is present the next is igm 5 to 8 percent of serum immunoglobulin has igm the normal level in our blood is 0.5 to 2 mg per ml half life is 5 days most of igm are intravascular so 80% of the igm is present intravascular phylogenetically oldest immunoglobulin class it is the oldest immunoglobulin class because it is present um, when the fetus is 20 weeks of age it is not transported across the placenta but it is not moving across the placenta igg moves across the placenta presence of igm in fetus or newborn is identified in case of syphilis rubella newborn uh, rubella hiv infection and toxoplasmosis so i presence of igm in fetus is noted in case of syphilis rubella and hiv relatively short lived comparing to the other immunoglobulins highly potent as compared to igg 1000 times but ig am is more potent than the igg but it is less active so it is highly potent but less active largely confined in the intravascular space so sometimes they may ask difference between in igg and igm you should write this is intravascular igg is intravascular and extravascular and it is high potent and less active whereas and it is mostly present uh, it will not cross the placental barrier so these are all the igm qualities igd immunoglobulin d it resembles structurally igg okay its concentration is 3 mg per 100 ml mostly intravascular half life is 3 days and it also stimulates the b cell activation and it is discovered by rezaka molecular weight is 8s half life is 2 days represents igg structurally affinity of the surface of tissue cells mast cells of same species so ige is mostly present in the mast cells doesn't pass placental barrier extravascular in distribution so ige is present in extravascular not intravascular and it is mostly attached with mast cell it represents the structure looks like an igg and the half life is 2 days so thank you we have discussed about what is antigen properties of antigen what is antibody structure of antibody and different types of antibody that is immunoglobulins we will see antigen antibody reaction in the coming video thank you